Nicely done. When Stephanie Dobson thought about the future, her plans did not include cancer. And this will be good. A working mom with two young children, she chalked up her gastrointestinal problems to her recent pregnancies. When they didn't go away, she got a colonoscopy. I ended up getting a colonoscopy um, on September 13th in uh, 2023 and got a call the next day. It turns out I had stage three uh, rectal cancer. You had a coffee shop. I was at Starbucks, yep. <laughs> Starbucks on Charles Street in Boston, yep. I left my coffee. I walked out. After the initial shock, Stephanie went to the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Her treatment plan included genetic testing. Finding out that, you know, I had Lynch syndrome, my kids might have, each of them have a 50% chance of having Lynch was uh, a lot tougher than just finding out, you know, my own health news. Lynch syndrome is a mutation in genes that fix flaws in DNA. Without these so-called repair genes, the body has trouble fighting certain cancers. It can increase the risk of colorectal cancer from 20 to 60 percent, depending on which genes are affected. It can also lead to an increased risk for ovarian, uterine, pancreatic, and skin cancers. Stephanie's doctor is Matt Jurglin. He runs the Lynch Syndrome Center at Dana-Farber. It's the first in the nation. The center offers the latest cancer treatments, as well as counseling on nutrition, fertility, and mental health issues. And Dr. Jurglin says one of the keys to saving even more lives is what's called cascade testing. The cascade testing aspect of this is huge. The person in front of us being treated for cancer, if we find that they have Lynch syndrome, they have a family. They have possibly siblings, possibly children, likely parents, aunts, uncles, et cetera. And so the ability to find it in that person gives us the ability to spread that information throughout their family and, and get people in for screening. So while there's no cure for Lynch syndrome, the person with cancer can help prevent it in their relatives by urging them to get genetic testing. If they're positive for Lynch, the additional screenings can help catch any disease before it spreads. Two of Stephanie's family members tested positive for Lynch syndrome and they're now actually patients at Dana-Farber. As for her illness, Stephanie was treated with immunotherapy and is now cancer free. She does have to go back for regular screenings. But she has her life back now and says it is richer than ever. When something like this happens to you, when you're young, how does it change the way you live your life after? I am more present. <laughs> I think being a mom of two young kids forces that a little bit. I'm far less by bothered by the things that used to cause me stress and anxiety. Yeah, how could you not be right? Uh, we should mention Lynch syndrome does not usually lead to childhood cancer. So Stephanie and her husband plan to talk about genetic testing for their children when they're a little older. Let's check in now with our friends at the Colaguard Classic Golf Tournament there in Tucson, Arizona. We've got allies, allies dressed in blue from the Colorectal Cancer Alliance, where I, I do serve as an unpaid board member, including Dr. Christopher Liu, who serves as a co-director at the University of Colorado Cancer Center. Dr. Liu, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Let's let's talk about this survey that the alliance the alliance just wrapped up a, a short time ago. That took a look at how Americans view cancer screenings. What what did the survey find? So the Colorectal Cancer Alliance performed a large survey of people's perceptions and what they thought about colorectal cancer screening and even colonoscopies. And the results were fascinating. Over two thirds of the respondents said that they would rather file their taxes rather than get a colonoscopy. Hmm. So why is this? We know that about 25% of the respondents were scared to get a colonoscopy. And we certainly understand that it's a medical procedure. But an additional 20% felt like they didn't have enough information about colorectal cancer screening. But the reality is this, colorectal cancer is a potentially preventable disease. And if you find colorectal cancer at its earliest stage, the cure rates are higher than 90%. So we want everybody to remember two things. Number one, colonoscopies can prevent colorectal cancer. And then number two, we want everybody to start screening at the age of 45. You can get more information about this at getscreen.org. That's getscreen.org. It can be life-saving, yeah. and I'll tell you what, that sounds a lot better than filing your taxes. Yeah, it does, Dr. Lou. Really quickly here, I, I know that the alliance uh, that we, birth, we both work with solely f focused on ending colorectal cancer in our lifetime. What's the latest on, on those efforts? What can you tell us? 
Yeah, we know over the last 15 to 20 years, there have been incredible advances in the treatment and prevention for colorectal cancer. But we also know that there's so much more that needs to be done. Our patients and their families, they deserve a cure for colorectal cancer. So how do we do that? The Colorectal Cancer Alliance is committed to ending colorectal cancer through initiatives like Project Cure CRC. Project Cure CRC has given over $11 million to 24 innovative research projects. This is outstanding, but we know that there's so much more that needs to be done. That's why we're here today. We're raising colorectal cancer awareness, but we also want to support colorectal cancer research. That's how we're gonna get a cure. So we encourage people to donate to Project Cure CRC. And for researchers, you can submit proposals. Dr. Lou, thank you. A big thanks to you and a big thanks to all those folks behind you as well. Our friends from the Colorectal Cancer Alliance there in uh, Arizona. Please tell them hello. Sorry I couldn't get out there this year. And, and again, folks, if you're watching or listening, it's, it's worth repeating what, what he just said. Their early detection is key. So please consider getting tested. The screening age, again, as you probably know, hopefully, it's been moved. It was 50. It is now 45. That's the screening age. And for more information and some resources, you can scan the QR code at the bottom of uh, your screen there. And also, of course, our website today. If you're watching and you've been putting it on, yes, so, and it honestly, time. it's gotten a lot better. Yes. You might have heard the yep. prep and all that. It's yeah, not, not your fa- It's not going to be the best day mm-hmm. you've ever had, but it's, it's not, not the worst. terrible. No. Not and consider at all. Uh, 45 get, men and women, right? Yes, 45 men and women, unless you have a family history. If you have a mm-hmm. family history or if you have some other medical issues, it may even be sooner than that. And also check out more information on Lynch syndrome as well. That's, that's, I had no idea that that yeah. was a thing until, yeah. until that story. So, all right. Good stuff, buddy. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget, you can catch the Today Show every morning on NBC or take today when you're on the go. Just follow the Today podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.